Welcome, my friends. Um, I'm so excited to be here with Bofield Berry. Um, she's a playwright. We chatted like two years ago um, when you uh, were working on Red Summer at the Blue Barn. Um, right. And it's great to see you again. So happy new year. Happy new year to you too, Andy. Hello. Hello. Well, you are working on something new now, and I'm excited. It's called Buffalo Woman, a Black Cowgirl Musical. So, yes. yeah, let's just dive in. And what the heck is it? <laughs> um, well, during Red Summer, um, we do this thing when we're making new plays called dramaturgy. And that means you're bringing in the history, right? You're bringing in historical uh, relevance about whatever time you're writing about. And during that uh, process of Red Summer, I found out that there were Black women cowgirls of the Wild West from my dramaturg. And I immediately felt this moment of we're doing that, this connection. Um, I wanted to just dive in and find out I'm a huge history buff. So for me not to have known about these women was a huge no-no for me. Um, so I jumped in with doing this research and I was like, this is a musical. I want to hear their voices. I want to tell their yeah. stories. And so Buffalo Women was born from that initial idea. And it's a musical about, it's historically based. It's also about revenge. It's about motherhood and it's about freedom. It's yeah. Six women on the great plains of this uncharted, um, new America, right? Mm -hmm. um, in a time that we really associate with this macho male cowboy thing. There were yeah. Black women, all, former, all formerly enslaved, that were also making great strides in America at that time. Wow. And how, well, let, let me, I'm just going to ask you a little bit, how, like, how long did it take you to do the research? I'm curious, just from a. I'm still researching. I'm okay. still in the process. It's like this ongoing thing because I get stuck in these rabbit holes and anybody who loves history know how that knows how yeah. that goes. You find out one thing and then it opens up this whole other yep. link to things. Yeah. Um, so now I'm, I'm, I'm diving into the world of Mormon slave masters <laughs> on their trek on the Oregon trail. Um, so I'm still heavily researching, but that very first initial time of research was over that whole, um, let me see, 2020, that whole COVID year was right. like a good time to sit down and just hammer out some research. Right. So um, you may have answered this, but maybe talk a little bit more. Are these actual historical figures or are they like um, just the, you know, the energies and the, and the, you know, the makings of like a lot of different them, different ones into the characters? It is both. Okay. So I have three, I've got six characters all together really seven, but six, six actors and, um, three women, stagecoach, Mary, Kathy William and Biddy Mason are all real life historical figures. Biddy Mason was one of the richest and first black female landowners. She owned the majority of LA County in the wow. 1800s. And she went to court to get herself freed. So she initially she freed herself and then became this really big mogul. Um, Biddy Mason had more money in 1870 than I have today in 2021. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't face anything that she's been through. Um, Stagecoach Mary was um, the first black female mail carrier in the U S and she didn't get that job until she was 63 years old. She got the job because she was the fastest person to be able to rope up these horses onto her stagecoach and get going faster than any man and anybody half her age. And Cathay William was a woman who pretended to be a man so that she could serve in the U S army as a Buffalo soldier. So these women, oh, goodness. <laughs> they were out here killing it. Yeah. And, their stories are so unique and so exciting. Um, so then I took the spirit 
that they offer um, to create some fictional characters that help tell their story and help tell the story of yeah. other lesser known um, Black women from that time too. And all together, we get all of our Buffalo women. Do you foresee like this going on the road? Yeah, I do. Because I we mean, are. my gosh, <laughs> this is something that needs. Yeah, I mean, I can totally see that. So um, I have big dreams. We so we start we start here at the Blue Barn. Yeah. Um, we're going to open May 26th, which okay. is so exciting. And then we have um, a follow-up production in Des Moines with a different cast, different director, same show. And then the same thing in Kansas City. Okay. And then from there, we all converge. The show takes place over Juneteenth. That's the, when the show starts. So we all converge. Everybody will be performing on Juneteenth. Um, in our okay. three different cities. Wow. And then, you know, there's talks about what if we go on the Oregon Trail or what if we take mm-hmm. this, you know, and, and perform the show uh, in, in many different places. Yeah. And I think that's the spirit of the show. It's definitely a road show. So, yeah. No, I'm, I'm super excited. Um, so, who else is on the Buffalo women team? Are we talking about the, the performers or? your team, like your team. So I'm composing with, um, I'm writing and doing lyrics. And then I've got a composer, uh, J. Isaiah Smith, who's also from Omaha, who is, he's just young and amazing and fresh and really dedicated to the show. So we've been working together since summer of 2020. Okay. Um, Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's been going for a couple of years now. Um, so he's my guy. And then Ishelle Childers is going to be directing us here at the Blue Barn. Ishelle has been on stage for 30 years. Um, she used to run Snap Theater. I mean, she's oh, yeah. Yeah. amazing. So she's going to really bring that spirit that we need. And then we have a, a really great cast of, of Omaha, like veterans and mm-hmm. Omaha uh, future veterans, like top talent. So can you tell us who's in the cast? I can. We've got Tammy Ray Jackson, okay. Randy Smith, Tiffany White Welchin, Nadia Williams, Dara Hogan, and Brianna Carradine. That's my cast. That's awesome. And are you, I mean, I'm just, are you like, are you now in, um, rehearsals? We are in two weeks starting the workshop process which is so exciting this workshop is a week long we're having all of the cast the creative team all of the musicians and we're really going to this is the cool thing about making a new musical yeah we don't know what it looks like yet we don't know how all these pieces fit together yet so inside of this workshop process we're going to be able to play and create and and really set the show up for what it's going to be for the rest of its life. Um, so then we'll go into final rehearsals in April for the production. Okay. All right. That is so cool and, and, and awesome. Um, so let's just talk a little bit, cause you've mentioned you've, you've been working on this since 2020. So what is it like writing a mu- musical during COVID or during a pandemic? I mean, what was the experience and, and is the experience still? Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot. We started, Jay and I started in the summer. We met up a couple of times in person. And then um, when things started to go left again, we started doing it on Zoom. And yeah. so we had a lot of rehearsals, like imagine writing music back and forth like this. <laughs> right, right. Right. Um, but we've made it work. And then this year we've been able to get together a little bit more, but we definitely have the challenges of, delays and technical issues. And I can't actually hear you right now. You know, um, it's given us a unique perspective on Mm -hmm. writing such a big, such a big show. Um, but also I feel like it flexed a muscle that if we can write a musical on zoom, we can do anything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm just like in awe. I mean, I just, I just think this is so fabulous um and you know this is to share this music with everyone the music is just amazing and i can say that and still remain humble because i didn't write the music (laughs) jay is like an amazing composer and um where he's taken i have all of these 
shower songs. I call them. I'll get in the shower. I have an idea. I message it to him. And then two hours later, he's like turned it into reality. Wow. Um, what an amazing process. I mean, I think that just, um, just from being, you know, in your position and working with somebody like that, it just, I mean, I can see where you're just like, wow. Um, how, how everything, you know, the synergy and how that takes hold and, and, um, and then you, you know, at the end have this beautiful thing that you created, um, together and then adding all these other pieces to, to actually bring it, you know, to life. So, wow, that is awesome. Um, so we talked a little bit about what's next for the play, but you, you let's just go through the, so you're opening again. So you're opening in May, May what? 26. Okay. Um, and then it's going to be in Omaha. It's going to run for how long? It runs through June 19th weekend. I think June 19th or June 20th is our final show, whatever that Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anything else? I mean, we've got about 60 seconds left. Anything else you want to just add before I, before we say goodbye? <laughs> um, I would just let people know if you want to follow our journey. You can find us on Instagram or on TikTok under Buffalo Women Musical. And I post some scenes from our rehearsals. I post some uh, some songs. You can listen in to some of the things that we're working on. And as we move forward in this workshop process and beyond, we're always looking for people who would like to come on as producers and help us move forward. So if okay. you're interested in doing anything like that, you can contact us through... Um, through Buffalo Women Omaha at yep. gmail.com. Okay, great. Well, again, congratulations. I cannot wait to come see this amazing production. And I'm excited for the journey. I mean, where you're going to go, where this takes you, um, that's going to be really fun to watch as well. So, I'm really excited for that journey too. I, I always, I'm giddy up. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Bofield, thank you so much for joining me today. And I will be in touch. I'm going to be yeah, connecting with you. And um, yeah, and just, I'm just so excited. So Beautiful. thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome. And folks, we will be right back. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm here with a good friend, Laura Stastny. She is the executive director of Nebraska Wildlife Rehab. Laura, thanks so much for joining me today. Hi, Andy. As always, it's it's great to be with you. Um, you know, when we talked back in the fall, or it was in 2021, sometime later in the year, you know, you were working on the big new wildlife center, and it's actually open now. The public can come. And, um, and you have a gift shop. I mean, there's so many things. So I'm just gonna let you kind of talk about, um, about the center. But first, let's just let everybody know what is Nebraska Wildlife Rehab? So Nebraska Wildlife Rehab is a nonprofit with a twofold mission. We're here to rescue, rehabilitate and return to the wild native wildlife. And also to educate people about our native wildlife and ecosystems and how to live in harmony with wildlife. Um, and you guys do so many amazing things. Um, I mean, I've known you for years and just really, you know, the, an organization that, that does help the wildlife and, um, we'll talk more about that, but let's, let's talk about this center that's kind of been, you know, out there for, for, for years and it's, and it's now open. So tell us, tell us about it. 
Yeah, so in our last 20 years, um, we've had lots of iterations of how we've operated and where we've operated, but our goal was always to open a large wildlife center and veterinary clinic to really serve our patients and our community. And so we are delighted after many years of work to open the Baldwin Wildlife Center and Hubbard Family Wildlife Hospital right in the heart of Omaha. We're at 97th and M in Omaha. And the new wildlife center, yes, it has a gift shop and people can drop off animals and a lot of people donate goods like towels and, and food and things. And they can drop all of those off during our winter operating hours, which are 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Every day we're here. Those hours will get expanded in the summer when we're super busy with animals. Um, but this wildlife center is designed to provide optimal care for wildlife in our community. And with the addition of one of, if not the best equipped wildlife hospital in the country with all sorts of amazing medical equipment for our animals, um, we are really primed to go to the next level with our care for wildlife, um, our research into best management and care practices, and all of our partnerships in the community, whether it's the Nebraska Humane Society, the Game and Parks Commission, Collective for Youth, all the schools that we work with, the research that we do with UNO and UNL and Creighton, um, it, it provides us that space and that that room yeah. to grow. Um, and you know, we have 17 animal nurseries that are fully equipped for biosecurity and cleanability and flexibility. And we just um, every day our staff comes to work and we are floating because it's just such an amazing facility. And Omaha donors, and Nebraska donors step forward to make this happen. And we are just so incredibly grateful. So let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, so the facility, yeah, it, it's open and you've got all of, I mean, all the state of the art um, um, equipment and everything, like you said, that you haven't had before. Um, are there other things that you need from the community? Like you said, towels and things like that. So people wanting to also contribute. Um, are there additional items? Yeah, so there are so many ways that people can contribute. And we do keep an Amazon wish list if people want right. to shop for wildlife. And we also have just a regular wish list. So old towels and sheets, um, pet dishes, things that you're getting rid of from um, pets because your pet outgrew them, even some pet toys because we use them for enrichment, particularly for raccoons. Um, so our wish lists, um, and then also people can contribute in so many ways. We, um, well, let's see what COVID does, but we kind of put our volunteer program in hold with COVID. We were working in a really small facility and it wasn't safe. So we're relaunching our volunteer program for the new Wildlife Center in Omaha this, this spring. So if you're interested in volunteering, now is the time to go to our um, website and put in an inquiry to our volunteer coordinator. Um, and then of course, financial donations are always really appreciated. So unlike dogs and cats, we have a lot of really specialized things that we need to buy for our wildlife. And so when people donate funds, it goes to those really specialized diets. So those really specialized medical equipment, that's not just an easy thing for people to donate um, uh, as a good. So for us, there are just so many ways that people can help. And the last one, which I think is maybe the most important is um, to share the work that we do. So to share it on social media, um, by email, or to refer people to us when they have a wildlife issue. Um, because really getting the word out that we're here and that we're available to our community, um, but also to get the word out that there are alternatives to nuisance wildlife issues that don't involve damaging wildlife, that we can right. live with them and we are here to provide people with humane solutions to any wildlife issue that they might have. So what are some, just briefly, cause I know we're, I'm gonna have you back on probably in, in four to six weeks, but what, what are some of the, the common issues that people have with, with wildlife? Yeah, so at this time of year, it has to do with wildlife and buildings. I mean, that's kind of universal, but people notice it in the winter because they're spending more time inside. Sure. Um, so they're hearing animals in their walls or their attics. A lot of times um, it's raccoons or squirrels that are up in an attic space or in the eaves of a house. Um, it could be bats in the walls. And there are very humane ways to deal with these issues without hurting wildlife, without trapping and relocating it, because that actually usually kills wildlife when you relocate it, which a lot of people don't know. Um, and we're here to provide those solutions. And we just kind of walk with people 
it doesn't it's it usually doesn't happen overnight but it might take a few days to get an animal out and get the the access space repaired but we're actually part of our mission is here to be here to just walk the process yeah. through with people and make sure that it's resolved for the people and for the animals yeah and i am actually on your website right now there is <laughs> so i'm going to put this over here um there is so uh there's so much information so for people who are wanting to to learn more, there's some, you know, you've got different ways of, of if they have come across an animal, how to, you know, what needs to happen. Um, so I encourage people, it's NebraskaWildlifeRehab.org. Um, news and events, education, how you can help. There's so much information here as well. And I did, um, I, I guess one of the reasons I've mentioned the gift shop is because um, I saw posts about it, you know, over the holidays and, mm -hmm. um, and really unique items, um, fun, unique items. So I think you can shop online as well if you want to shop. Yeah, you totally can shop online. I, um, I'm not a super big fan right now of our online interface. It's um, not as easy as I'd like it to be. Um, but if you're in the Omaha area, I really encourage you to stop by, yeah. um, especially if you like quirky animal things. We um, we have a tendency to use vendors who are local artists, um, not, not necessarily local to Nebraska, but local to their communities, small artists. Um, and we tend to pick up our ideas when we're traveling. So if it's something that right. we really like, we will go contact them and see if they'll let us wholesale. And the really cool thing is that all of those proceeds go for wildlife care. And so you can come and buy something really cool for yourself or for a friend and still um, help wildlife in that way. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Laura, again, um, I'm looking forward to talking to you uh, in about four to six weeks. Um, we'll be talking about kind of what's happening in the wildlife world. It'll be spring, close to spring that time. So lots to talk about then. Uh, we are covering, um, doing a great article on you in Metro Magazine in the next issue. Um, so again, thank you so much for, for everything you do for wildlife and um, in our community. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Andy. We really appreciate you helping us get the word out.